Well, that was interesting. We haven't had a day like this in quite some time. In fact, this was the first 1% down day for the S&P 500 since August. Not only that, but of course we had the Berkshire Hathaway, Amazon, JP Morgan news trying to disrupt the healthcare industry. Uh, we've got the Federal Reserve interest rate meeting coming up. We've got the State of the Union tonight. Uh, we've got volatility at three month highs. A lot of things going on here in the markets, but as always, we're here to try to help you stay calm and uh, see the market for what it is. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video. Today is January 30th. 2018. I'm your host, Brandon Vanzi, and I'll be here with you Tuesdays and Thursdays going forward and looking forward to that. Thanks so much for joining me here tonight, whether this is your first time or whether you're a repeat viewer of these Market Outlook videos. We certainly appreciate that here at Market Scholars. Now, if you're not familiar with YouTube, one thing that I would probably encourage you to do, click the red subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and click that bell icon while you're at it. That way you can be notified whenever we do upload these videos uh, to YouTube. While you're on YouTube, if you enjoy the videos, we would also encourage you to give us the old thumbs up there. It helps us know that we're doing a good job for you guys and that we should continue to do these videos going forward. Uh, in addition to that, we'd love to see your comments. You can uh, kind of scroll down to the bottom, leave a comment if you have uh, some suggestions on things we could do better, or uh, just to reiterate things that you're enjoying out of these uh, presentations. And of course, uh, in the description area, you're also welcome to sign up for our email distribution list that does get sent out uh, every night and uh, does include those bullish and bearish clusters or overbought, oversold, however you want to describe those. Uh, if you're not receiving those and you've signed up for that distribution, distribution list, make sure you are checking your junk mail. A lot of times uh, services these days will put uh, these emails from these mass emails into your junk folder. So look for us in there if you can't find us anywhere else and uh, make sure that uh, you add us to your address book as well. Now in addition to that, we're also on Twitter. David and I are both very active users on Twitter, and so we would love to have you follow us there to stay up to date with our insight along the way. Remember, if you want Twitter to push our content to you, uh, it would make sense for you to like and retweet David and I's and even the Market Scholars uh, tweets regularly, so that way Twitter knows that, hey, you want to keep on receiving tweets from us uh, going forward. So my handle is at Brandon Van Z, all one word. Make sure you're following our company handle as well, which is simply at market underscore scholars. In addition to that, we're also on Facebook. So if you haven't joined our Facebook community group yet, uh, be sure to uh, do so. We've got over 800 of you on there and looking forward to add a lot more as time goes on. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, first off, I've got the S&P 500 chart pulled up in front of us here. Take a peek at what's been going on here in the last couple of days. Uh, notice that we were down over 1%, as I mentioned in the intro there. And uh, today I have a uh, slightly different view just to kind of highlight how rare that has been here uh, lately. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a kind of a histogram uh, that does show percent changes uh, for the S&P 500. And I've got this black horizontal line drawn down here uh, at the bottom to signify a 1% move. Now you'll notice that today's candle was enough to bring us down over 1%. Again, you can always check that up here in the upper left of your uh, think or swim charts as well. Uh, S&P 500 was down 31 points today. That was good for a 1.09% uh, return. Now, you'll notice down below this red line does breach that black horizontal line. And if we kind of just extend our eyes to the left to the last time we saw a day as violent as today was back in August. But we have to remember, we've gone up a lot since August. I know a lot of times the, uh, the, the, the tendency for a newer trader especially is to hit the panic button when we see a day like today, especially if we've kind of been trained and conditioned to see nothing but upside market uh, movements over time. Uh, David and I have both been trading since the dot-com bubble, so this isn't our first rodeo, and sometimes it can be easier said than done, but it is important for us to remain calm on a day like today. Um, one way to help your mind stay calm is to tell it a story. Uh, one story could have been, well, what would have happened back in August had you panicked back then simply because the market was down over 1%, right? That, that was back here on the 17th of August. 
and it would have been this candle that I'm kind of circling here on the chart. And on that day, we closed at approximately 2430 on the S&P 500. And so if I were to get my calculator out here uh, and take 2822, which is where we're at right now, subtract out uh, 2430, and you can see that's a gain of about 400 points divided by 2430, our starting point back then, you would have missed out on a 16% return. Now we're talking about a half a year here. That's enough to definitely break uh, your performance attempts to, to beat the market uh, in that time period. So I'm not here to say that this isn't going to lead to something uh, bigger. We don't know, we never know. We do know that we're in a very extended bull market. But as David tells you guys, night in and night out it seems, we don't fall from grace in one straight line. More, much more often than not, when we have a, a, a breakdown in the market, a major one, um, we'll find that the top formation process takes sometimes months, sometimes up to a year. So the chances of this being the all-time high and us going straight down starting two sessions ago is incredibly low. So again, I'm not here to tell you what you should or should not do, I'm not your advisor, but I can tell you that generally speaking, it doesn't pay to panic on days like this. Let's see how it plays out. Remember, most of you have a long portfolio. I know I certainly do. I took some pain today. There's no denying that, right? Anybody who has a long portfolio takes up some pain on a day like this, but remember, if you panic every time we have a 1% move down, you could possibly be missing out a 16% move in six months, just like everyone who panicked on that last 1% day back in August. So we'll see, uh, as always, stay tuned to these videos. As more serious developments start to occur, if that should occur, we will of course inform you on a day-to-day -day basis. So just stay in tune with these videos. We'll do our best for you as well. Now getting back to the analysis here, uh, you'll notice that Despite the two-day pullback that we've experienced here in the S&P 500, we still have a green background chart. Now remember on this particular chart set up here, that basically means we still have a bullish posture on the S&P 500. You're probably looking at your portfolio balance today thinking, how in the world could you still be bullish? Well, that's how far up we've gone. When we go up a lot, we can give up quite a bit to the downside before we even change our posture. If you were just to glance at this chart, or ask your three-year-old like I have to look at this chart and ask what direction it's going. It's still going up. So uh, in the meantime, we may be hunkered down in some safer assets. There's definitely something to be said for uh, risk off type of environments like we have right now, but it doesn't mean you have to go out and out bearish. So let's see what uh, happens with the Federal Reserve. Let's see what happens with the State of the Union and some very important earnings announcements coming up this week, by the way, as well. Apple and Amazon and others are coming up. Uh, but whatever we do, let's not just panic. That usually does not do anyone any good. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next chart. And this is gonna be a four grid here. And in this particular setup, we're gonna look at the S&P 500 in the upper left. We've got the Dow Jones in the upper right. We've got the NASDAQ in the lower left, and we've got the Russell 2000 in the lower right. Again, the thing that stands out to me is that all four colors of the backgrounds of these charts are green, signifying that all four of them, despite the what some would perceive to be a bloodbath today, remember we've seen much more aggressive days than this over time. And back in 2008 and 2009, 1% down days were the norm. Um, so it's just, it feels uncomfortable because we haven't felt it as much here recently. Uh, but they are very, very normal uh, throughout history. But despite what a lot of people would feel like is a big, big pullback that we're experiencing right now, we still have bullish conditions across the board. Every single one of the indices here in the United States continues to be bullish according to the intermediate term line on the market forecast, which is the, the main line that we use to establish our posture during these videos here. The one that's coming the closest to uh, possibly jeopardizing that bullish posture is the Russell 2000. Notice that the Russell 2000 has that green line down here. It's at 84.21 and falling. Remember, if it falls below 80, we would consider that weakly bearish. Uh, we've got a ways to go before then, but that's likely if this uh, near-term pullback that we're experiencing right now leads to a few more days or a few more weeks of, of bearishness, uh, it's likely that the Russell 2000 small caps are the ones that will break into some potential bearish posture first. 
If we go ahead and take a look at our next chart set up here, this one's going to be our three green arrows chart set up. And this is where things get maybe a little bit different. The last time I did the video, um, not only did we have bullish postures across the board on all four of our major U.S. indices, but we also had three green arrows across the board on all four of our indices. Hmm, things have changed a little bit here uh, because as we look at this three green arrows chart set up, we don't have any green charts. Remember this particular setup here, this four grid, uh, will light up green if we've got three green arrows, which is a way of looking at uh, a 30 period moving average, a MACD and a stochastics, looking at bullish versus bearish signals and seeing where they're lining up. Uh, it will turn pink if we've got three red arrows uh, and it will stay white if we've got a mix of green and red arrows, which is just a little bit of a neutral uh, view more than anything. Obviously, trends are still bullish, so I don't want anybody to, to say that uh, this is a neutral environment. It's not. We're still bullish trend-wise, but in the near term, we do have a little bit more disturbance to make our posture somewhat uh, more neutral than it would have been otherwise. Now, the culprit in most of these cases, in fact, all of them, is the MACD. Now, remember, the MACD is a technical indicator that gives us a sense of what's going on with momentum. So right now, that once bullish momentum that we had uh, over the last couple of weeks has stalled out and has given way to um, a lack of momentum here. And so we've got red arrows here on the MACD on all four of our indices. Not only that, but on the Russell 2000 specifically, we also have a red arrow on the stochastics. And so if the Russell 2000 were to fall below that 30 day moving average in this particular case, uh, we would actually have three red arrows on the Russell 2000 and that chart background would turn pink at that point. But right now we're not there yet. And a lot of times we do find that markets, uh, whether we're talking about big ETFs or stocks, when we're in uptrends, a lot of times those securities will bounce off of those rising 30 period moving averages. And so uh, we'll, we'll hold out and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out uh, as that day comes, if it, shall, if it shall come, and we'll find out if uh, the Russell 2000 is ready for a bounce quite yet or not. Moving on now, let's take a look at our next chart set up here. And this one's going to be a longer term version. Hang on, I, I clicked on the wrong one there. Let me do that again. There we go. All right, so this is gonna be longer term versions. Remember my other charts that we've been looking at so far have been daily candles, mostly three months in length uh, daily candles. This chart is a little different. This is our longer term version of what's been going on out there. Each one of these charts represents three years in length and every one of those candles you see on the chart in front of you represents one week in length. And so as we look at this, we again shouldn't be surprised to see that we remain in bullish conditions. Remember, the more sensitive views that we just reviewed are going to be the first that are going to break down to bearish if that is going to occur. It's going to take a while for these charts here in the longer term to go bearish because it withstands the storm a lot better. Now remember, that has its pros and cons. Every single strategy that you are implementing has a set of pros and cons. It's up for you to understand what those pros and cons are and compare them to other strategies and to your own personality to see what might be best for you. But of course, the, the upside on this particular setup is the lack of sensitivity. What I mean by that is the last time we had a bullish crossover for all four of these major US indices on this long-term chart was way back in 2016. In fact, the latest one that gave us a bullish signal would have been the Russell 2000, and it would have been down here somewhere around um, May of 2016, and that's when we had this gold line right here go up and through that black line. Those are two different moving averages. We call that the golden cross that occurred right there. Now we're applying that to weekly candle charts. Sometimes you'll hear people uh, refer to that golden cross using daily candles when they're doing the 50 uh, 200 day uh, crossover. This is a 1040 crossover since we're using weekly candles instead, but it's effectively the same thing. So the point being, we've withstood all of the pullbacks we've had along the way. Remember, we would have withheld or withstood Brexit, which would have been a much more dicey uh, economic and political situation than what we're experiencing here in the last couple of days. And so that's the good thing. It withstands a lot of pressure uh, that the markets can throw at it if you are someone who believes that markets traditionally go up over the long term, which I'm one of those folks. Uh, that's what history has shown us. And yes, bear markets are real. They do occur and, they, and there will be future ones. But in general, if you believe markets go to the upside, uh, then something like this could allow you to absorb miniature pressures along the way. 
Now, the downside of the strategy is that it's not going to get you out at the top. Very few ever will. Uh, but in particular, this one, it's going to require lots of lots of work on the upside. Uh, uh, I should say on the downside, uh, bearish candles to the downside, uh, week after week before we actually start seeing some of these crossovers. So uh, everything's coming up roses for the long-term charts despite the last two days worth of downside pressure. All right, moving on now to our 12 grids. I, this is where I'm gonna kill the camera feed so that way you guys can see all uh, 12 of these charts that we have in front of us. And you'll notice here, again, it's kind of a theme. You know, despite really severe pullbacks, what a lot of people would feel is a very severe uh, market that we've had in the, in the last two days, we still have bullish charts across the board. Not only do we have the S&P 500 in the upper left with a continued bullish posture using that green intermediate term line on the market forecast indicator, but almost all of the sectors remain bullish as well to various degrees. Uh, you will notice that energy, uh, the second one, at the top here uh, is coming right down to that rising moving average right there. So that's one that we're gonna wanna pay attention to. Remember, if you ever wanna look at these miniature charts in greater detail, you can right click on the chart itself, go to maximize cell, and that does blow it up to a greater degree. Now you'll notice here that yes, it's true, we still have a bullish posture using the market forecast because that green line remains in the upper reversal zone as you can kind of see down below here, but it's at 82.8 and falling. Again, if that crosses below 80 and goes to 79, that would then become a weekly bearish posture. So we're gonna keep our eye on that. Remember, energy is important from kind of a, a sector rotation perspective. For those of you that understand kind of the economic cycle and the business cycle, a lot of you will understand that you're gonna find that energy and materials traditionally are the, 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 the sectors that are firing on all cylinders when the market is about to top out. Now, my own perspective on this is that, yes, we did have bullishness out of energy and materials, but it didn't last long enough for me to believe that the business cycle is suggesting that the stock market is about ready to go into a bear market. I, I would need to see a lot more consistent upside pressure on energy and material stocks to the upside uh, before I would believe that to, to be the case. But who knows? Every cycle is a little bit different, so we have to, to you know understand that as well. Um, the only two sectors that are showing bearishness at this point are the two that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, the interest rate sensitive ones. You'll notice down below, we've got the utilities and we've got real estate. Those two are kind of viewed as bond-like proxies. And so when you have interest rates going up at a rate that we've seen here recently, I think that the 10-year hit 2.7% and is on the way to 3% uh, potentially, uh, we'll just have to see how things shake out with the with the uh, Federal Reserve meeting. But anyway, when we see interest rates go up, it should be no surprise whatsoever that real estate investment trusts and utility stocks that have those big juicy yields are going to struggle in that environment. Somewhat surprisingly, consumer staples have actually held up reasonably well. You know, I kind of look at consumer staples and healthcare as a little bit of a blend. I don't look at them as pure bond proxies, but certainly if you're looking for yield, you're, you're probably gonna find some decent players in those areas as well. But um, fortunately, for those of us that are uh, a little bit overexposed to uh, staples and healthcare, myself in included, and of course that's not a recommendation, uh, but just generally speaking, when you're a dividend growth investor like I am, you're gonna find that you're probably gonna be overweight staples. That's just the way it is. Um, you know, I've been very, very pleasantly um, surprised that they haven't had as much pressure uh, to their share prices as utilities and real estate have. So we'll see if that changes here in the future. But uh, for right now, we do have mostly bullish conditions despite the pressures of the last couple of days. Moving on to our next set of 12 grids, let's go to the foreign markets. Let's see what's going on with the stock markets around the world. And as you can see here, there's one that's probably catching your eye, and that indeed is Canada. It's the only chart on our list that uh, is in the pink. Now, uh, Canada, most of you are probably aware, is very uh, hooked into uh, energy. And so, you know, kind of going back to those sectors I showed you a moment ago, um, energy stocks were the ones that were coming the closest 
to potentially going to a weak uh, posture of the ones that are currently bullish at least. And so it should be no surprise that if energy is somewhat struggling in the last couple of days, and that's gonna pressure a country like uh, Canada as well. You'll also notice that we had a little bit of a bearish cluster or an overbought cluster, however you might wanna say that right here. That's what that red dot signifies on Canada right there. And we have had um, maybe three out of four uh, pullbacks uh, days since then. So uh, always worth paying attention to those uh, clusters. Now, speaking of which, I'm gonna come over here now and take a peek here at our next 12 grid, and that's gonna be our intermarket analysis 12 grid right here. And this is where we look at things that are different than stocks. Sometimes stocks are all the rage, like they kind of have been for the last six months, but when you start feeling a little bit of uh, turmoil in the stock markets, maybe some of you will look to uh, some of these other markets for your attention. And here we can look at things like volatility. I mentioned in the intro, take a look at volatility. You know, we have the VIX up uh, almost 7% today. Now it's still only uh, knocking its head uh, on 15 as a whole. And uh, it wasn't too long ago we used to uh, regularly mention that if the VIX were below 20, that was historically low. And of course, the last couple of years, it seems to have taken up permanent residence below 20. But uh, you can see what the last couple of days in the stock market decline have done to the VIX. And that is a very natural occurrence. Remember, those two things are generally inversely correlated to one another. So when the stock market falls, you find that the volatility index starts to spike. And we have seen that. You'll notice over the last three months, the VIX is actually up 40%, if you can believe it. So let me right click and let me go to maximize sell. And you'll see right over here a little bit better that the VIX is up about 40% in three months. Now, a big chunk of that just occurred here in the last couple of days. And so remember, the VIX isn't a traditional asset that you would feel comfortable trend trading. Usually it spikes for a few days and then comes back down equally hard. So uh, generally not a good tradable product, but it does tell you something about the environment that we're in. And right now there's skittishness out there. There's investors that are a little bit nervous about some of the things they see developing uh, out there. And remember how that's going to affect your options related trades as well. If you're a seller of premium, you may very well be uh, applauding this move that we've seen in the VIX here recently because it likely means that you're going to be taking in juicier credits uh, when you're selling your options contracts as well compared to what you might have seen at the beginning of the year. Um, but you can see here with this 12 grid, we have kind of a mix, all different types of things going on there, whether we're bullish or bearish. Um, one of the things that I wanted to uh, point out here is TLT. Notice that we've got what's known as an oversold cluster that is starting to develop here on TLT as of today's close. Now you'll notice that's the very first green dot you see on that chart going back for the last three months. Now if I right click on that chart and go to maximize cell, uh, again, notice that's the only cluster right there that you see. You can see that occurs when you get all three of those colored lines below 20 closing there on the same day. That's the first one on this chart. Now, if I go back and take a look at a longer time period, let's go back on a one year daily candle chart here. Notice that this is not the first time in the last year that's occurred. We have had three other times where that has happened. The last time was right here on October 26th. The time before that was back here on uh, July 10th. The time before that would have been over here on March 9th. Now, what you should be noticing about all of those occurrences is that indeed the reversal played out very, very nicely. Remember, these cluster signals are no guarantee of anything. Right? Just like anything in technical analysis, there is nothing that is 100%. So you do the best with what you see in front of you. But one of the things that I really try to stress to my students is don't just assume that a bullish cluster is going to reverse higher in price. Take a look at how it has acted with those types of signals in the past. And if you found that you would have been reasonably pleased by placing similar trades in the past based off of those signals, maybe it's worth taking a look at that type of a trade this time around as well. There was a, an, an old student, uh, Tim Grant, I don't know if he's watching the video here tonight, uh, but it seems like every time in, our, in, my, in the old class that I used to teach with my old employer, where I taught an options class every Tuesday, 
Anytime TLT gave us a bullish cluster signal, we did what was known as a bull put spread on it, and we were rewarded nicely most of the time. Maybe not all the time, but most of the time, because usually you just don't get a market that is hundreds of billions of dollars like treasuries here, this is the long-term treasury, um, to act erratically for a consistent period of time. Can we have out of the blue moves? Yes, but are they sustained out of the blue? A lot of times that's not the case. Now, some of you might be looking at this and saying, okay, um, you know, if we've got interest rates that are gonna be rising throughout the rest of the year, I don't wanna have any part of long-term treasuries. I get that. I understand this, this trade may not be for all of you, but for those of you that feel like it's gone a little bit too far, too fast, and there might be a little bit of a reversion to the mean type of a, uh, of a move like we saw back here, and like we saw back here, and like we saw back here, then maybe this is a trade that you could entertain for your paper money account. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and put that trade on. I'm gonna come over here to the trade tab, and I'm gonna pull up TLT, which again is your iShares ETF, focuses on the long-term treasuries here in the United States. And the good news is, first of all, this is generally a very liquid uh, security. This is oftentimes viewed as a, 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 a one of the main bond proxies out there. And so you do have decent liquidity. It might not be quite as liquid as something as SPY, but for bonds, uh, it does a pretty good job of that. Now, typically we like to go out about 30 to 50 days. Uh, really just depends on what you're thinking is going to occur. Um, in this case, I don't necessarily know if I believe that a, a, a major reversal is going to happen with treasuries going forward. It's possible that could happen if the stock market really starts uh, falling for whatever reason, there's a domino effect of, of some reason, then it's possible TLT will become a safe haven asset and it, it, share prices will go up for the longer term again, like we've seen so often in the last 30 or 40 years in this bond bubble. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you believe interest rates are gonna continue to rise going forward like they have in the past year, then you probably don't want to stake too much long-term uh, uh, into the portfolio if you're going to be bullish on something like this. So in this case, I'm going to I'm going to try to look at the 30 days out as opposed to the 50 days out. Uh, I just am looking at this as more of a reversion to the mean in the in the near term, but not necessarily a major trend reversal for TLT. So let's go over here to the March uh, contracts with 31 days until expiration. And uh, that would be the first week of March. Remember, these are weekly contracts, so make sure you're watching the liquidity to see if it works out for whatever your rules suggest. And I'm gonna come over here to um, the 30 delta. Now you'll notice that the 120s represent the 30 delta, or at least close to it. We've got about a 32 delta right there. So I'm gonna right click on the 120s. I'm gonna come down here to sell. And I could do a vertical, uh, just sell a vertical here if I just wanted to do a $1 wide. Um, in fact, let's just do that. I'm gonna click on that and I'll just change it manually. You can also do deep and wide, but sometimes it's a little bit easier for me to highlight if I just show you down below here. So we've loaded up our, uh, our, our put spread. And remember, this is a sold put spread, so this is gonna be a bullish trade. And we're selling the 120 put as our um, kind of driver of this trade. That's what's gonna create the, the credit for us. But we also want to buy a put in case we're flat out wrong. What if uh, interest rates spike in the next 30 days? Well, we don't want to be on the wrong side of that. So let's protect ourselves to a degree. And one thing that we can do is buy a put. Uh, now, we're still going to end up losing money if that were to be the case, but at least we can define our risk. And so in this case, a lot of times I will do a $2 wide just to save a little bit there uh, on commissions. Now, you'll notice the credit is $0.47, cents, and that's almost right at what we would find acceptable for a $2 wide. Why I say that is if you come over here and click confirm and send, notice that your max profit, now this is only if you're doing one contract, so some of you are gonna do 10, some of you are gonna do 20, whatever. You know, position size according to your own account. But um, the percentages should work out about the same. So if I get my calculator out here and I take uh, $47, which is what we would take in as a credit by doing this one trade, divide that by how much we're risking, in this case our max loss is 153, notice that our return on risk is just a hair above 30%. That's generally what we try to shoot for uh, if we can help it. So uh, I would find that to be uh, an acceptable starting point, um, but just because our percentages are mildly attractive doesn't mean we necessarily have to take the trade. One other thing that you could do 
is um, you could kind of eyeball where your break even would be. So if you got the calculator out again, now you can do this through the analyze tab, but I'm running out of time here on the video. So I'm just gonna do this manually to show you quickly. Um, 120 would be our sold strike, right? It, this is a product that's at 122 right now. So this would give us a $2 cushion. We don't want this thing to go below 120. This is a bullish trade. But we also have some credit that we're taking in. In this case, it looks like it just changed to 48 cents down here. And so if we take $120 minus 48 cents, that means that 119.52 is our break even. So if we come over here to the chart, and let me get a drawn item out here. And let me just do this. Whoops, hang on just a second. I'm just gonna draw this real quick and then I'm gonna edit the properties by right clicking on the line that I just drew. And let's put this at 119.52, which was our break even that we just calculated. And same thing here, 119.52 and let's left extend and right extend, hit okay. And the reason I did that was just to show you where our break even is. So that way you could visually make a guess on whether you believe that the stock was gonna get to those levels or not. Remember, we don't want it to go below this black line. If you believe this product stays above this black line for the next 30 days, then maybe this is a trade that you would take. On the other hand, if you're somebody that believes that these lower highs and lower lows over here, despite the oversold signal that we're seeing here uh, today, if you thought that was gonna continue into the future, then you likely would not wanna take this trade. For me, for practice purposes, I think we're gonna go ahead and place the trade. So we'll see if we get filled tomorrow. Uh, I'm comfortable, by the way, with either 47 or 48 cents on a $2 wide like this. So it just moved back down to 47 cents here, going to confirm and send. Everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and send that one in. So. With that, uh, I want to thank you again for joining me here tonight. I uh, hope you do continue to tune into these videos on a day in and day out basis. Remember not to panic on days like this. Could there be some ugliness in the markets in, the, in front of us? Of course, that's always a possibility, uh, but try to look at the markets with a clear head as best that you can. And always remember to uh, subscribe. Uh, like, comment, uh, do the retweets and the likes on Twitter as well if you want to continue to get stuff from David and I going forward. And remember, I'll be doing these videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays going forward. Uh, David will be doing them on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I'm going to look forward to getting to uh, work with you guys a lot more often than I have been up to this point. So with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Uh, hopefully, president gives us some rosy news on the State of the Union here tonight, and maybe we can uh, kind of stop the bleeding in the market that we've seen here in the last couple of days. Until next time, uh, good trading and good night. Bye-bye.